Fire Cipher. It's Friday. Fire! On Sway in the Morning. That's right, that's right, all right, man. It's time for that Fire Friday Cipher. Woo! It's the flagship benchmark for this show, Sway in the Morning, Shade 4-5. It's the only way we can kind of weave through the BS. The music business manufactures on a day-to-day basis all of these different distractions to keep you away from the bare essentials of why we came here in the first place, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. The basic fundamentals. You just heard Chris Villa, the DJ. You just heard him, right? We got the Fire Friday Cypher. You about to hear the MCs. Woo! I was just talking about Chris to Chris V about um, Red Bull, some competitions that they do. He says, "You, I see you host the Red Bull BC1 events. That's the B-boys and the B-girls, the dancers. You know what I mean? When you look around you, man, you see all these uh, graphics on everybody's shirt. You know, shout out to the, uh, to the writers, the graph writers. You know, a lot of times people don't talk about this, but, man, the guys that curate the soundtrack to our lives. Shout out to the producers. Hello. And today, man, the guy that we bringing up on the show that's going to be curating our Fire Friday Cypher, Heather B. Years ago, man, with MTV, I went up in Harlem and I start covering all these different movements. And I realized as I interviewed a lot of people, one of the people who was at the core of all these different mute movements is with us right now. He produced one of the most fierce and feared battle records of all time uh, when he produced this song that really kind of at a point where we didn't know if one of our favorite MCs was ever going to be able to recover from a battle blow that he received from Jay-Z. This man right here produced this song called Ether. Uh, that's the wrong song, man. What the hell just happened? Uh-oh. Man. Jay-Z. That's up, the nigga? right song. Hey, yo, I know you ain't talking about me, dog. <laughs> yes, talk to him. Fuck Jay-Z. You uh. been on my dick, nigga. You love my style. Let love that rock, let that rock. Jay-Z. Come on. I fuck with your soul like what? Ether. Will. Teach you the king. You huh? know you got son across the belly. Lose. I prove you lost the rest uh. yourself for the main event. Y'all impatiently waiting. It's like an AIDS test. What's the results? Not positive. Who's the best? Pop Nas. Yo, real up, real up, real up. Woo! It didn't stop there. Mean. It did not stop there. From there, they start calling him Ether Boy. <sighs> that is where that came from. Ether yeah. Boy. Ether Boy. Yes. It didn't stop there. That's you know, right. sometime after that, man, he just kind of helped to find the sound that was coming out of Harlem. Um, in a vibe. It wasn't just a sound. It was a whole movement that's been going on since he hit the streets. And I know it for a fact because I moved to Harlem. And I would see him in the streets, Heather B. Mm. I would see him in the streets. And we would celebrate and start popping champagne. Uh. Eat the boy. Uh. I see you eat the boy. Shit right here is crazy. Hey. hey. Another song that went haywire on that Ether Boy Records. He didn't stop there, man. He had hits falling out his pocket. I know it for a fact. I was trying to catch the hits, Tracy G. You should have saw me. <laughs> on 145th, I was catching the hits and bringing them back to the show so we could get it jumping. Jumping. Eat the boy. I'm jumping out the window with this one. Jumping out the window with this one. Jumping out the window with this one. Jumping out the window. 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 You already know. Hey, yo, you ain't got to worry, Harlem world, man, I got this. Hey. The studio spin nothing but the hotness. Hit the club up and your girl is on my list. Got the goons with me, so y'all don't want to try. Real up! 
Ladies and gentlemen, bringing him to the studio with us today, man. This dude is iconic. Uh, a, a, a New York representative. When people say, what happened to the sound of New York? You must not be looking directly in his face. The one and only Ron Browns is here. Yes, yes. I see. Yes, yes. Come on, yo. Come on, yes, man. Ron yes. Browns is here, man. I'm here. My man, how you been, brother? I've been awesome. Awesome. Man. One one of the things I love about you, and 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 when I over the years we bump into each other randomly man. in selective places. It could be the most random places. Or I see you. You don't even know I see you. Okay. Like and because you stay, you stay, you stay in the neighborhoods. I have never seen this man without a smile on his face. That's a good I thing. I appreciate yes. the vibration, man. This dude got good uh, energy, man. Thank you, brother. That's a good thing. I appreciate you, man. Um, when you look, when you listen to your history, I know you're more than aware of it. You're somebody who turns out a lot of music. You work on a lot of different projects, man. But th- is it surreal for you to realize you've been a part of so much history? Yeah. I mean, I just keep going. Yeah. Sometimes, like like when y'all playing the music now, I, I sit back like, wow. Yeah. You know I mean, I, I can remember those moments of creating them. and. Mm-hmm. How people, you know, took them. Yeah. So, yeah. What you remember about Ether? Mm-hmm. Ether, man. Like Ether was a beat that I just would would be mad annoying in my house. I was at my mother's house at that time. Uh-huh. I remember my sister would be like, "Yo, bro, turn that down." Like, mm-hmm. I used to think that was one of the you know dopest beats I had, and I used to play it all the time. Anytime artists came, yo, listen to this. Uh huh. And then um, like I, I I tell a story like one day um, hip hop came to my, uh-huh. my mother's house. It's like, yo, play this for Jay. And he's like, all right. I put it on CD and everything, gave it to hip hop. And then he never gave it to Jay. Oh, my and then, God. Um, wow. So I, J- Jay had Z a chance to be on the Ether beat? He had the chance. You got to tell folks who list, who are listening, you got to break down who hip hop is. Hip hop was Jay Z A&R at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And his name is Hip Hop. Yeah. Um, so he had the chance to have the Ether beat. It was two beats. I remember it clearly. Like uh-huh. it was the Ether beat and another beat I had that I would always just play. Like mm-hmm. somebody gonna rap off of this beat right here. Yeah, yeah, and he never gave it to Jay. But yeah. hip hop is my man. That's my so, guy. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 so after, okay, so how did Nas hear it? Um, you know, at that time, you had to be like uh, a Timberland or a Swiss. I was mm-hmm. still, you know, trying to get my way in. And me and I had a manager at the time, and we gave it to Nas' travel agent. Uh-huh. Like, yo, please, you know, you had to take the yeah, back door sometimes fine, back in the like days. Oh, They'd throw your CD like, who are you? <laughs> so we gave it to Nas Travel Agent. Like, yo, please, just just slide it to him. Uh-huh. Then they, she gave it to him, and then one day I got the call. Like, I think Nas picked number, you know, like 12. I'm like, yeah, right. I'm in Harlem. Like, Nas ain't picked my beat, man. Uh-huh. And then, like, th- that December, I think it was like 2000. They was like, yo, he wants you to come to the studio and hear it. So I came to the studio, and he was sitting there calm, like, eating fruit. Uh-huh. Like, you know, like, yeah, I got this in it. Joe Cole when this yeah. come out. Yeah. And then he played it, and I was just shocked. You know, I was like, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah. Like, it was a weird feeling, like, yeah. this good or bad? This is good because it's Nas, but it's bad because he's dissing somebody. Yeah. And it was just, you know, after he dropped, he dropped it, like, that next day with, with K. Slay, I think. Yeah. What, what, but what'd you York say to him that you you couldn't you wasn't brave was enough just, to say like man are we sure about this? <laughs> nah, I was just like, I was like I didn't put the F J Z in there, uh huh, you know. But I was just like this is crazy. This is a moment right here. Yeah, you knew you were in the moment. You yeah. had Nas, yeah. arguably one of the dopest of all time on one of your beats. Yeah, and then it wasn't like a typical disc record. It was like in song format. Right. Yeah. so it was like this is different. Mm-hmm. 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 So you got to the studio and the song was completed already? Yeah, it was done. It was done. You had nothing to do with the engineering, none, the mixing, none. the sound none. effects, nothing. No. That's crazy. The formatting of the song, none of that. Nothing. So, yeah, not nothing. Did nothing. they ask you for your approval? No. <laughs> they, just get, just get, they just gave me the money. Money, yeah. They just gave I like, the take money. it. <laughs> it's right there and there. No, no publishing, none of that. Just oh, take no. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, you got the publishing? Okay, yeah, yeah. my man Ron Browns, baby. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I so, mean, respectfully, like, every time I get on a platform, I want to say, rest in peace, Big L. Yeah. I kind of learned, like, you know, from producing him, like, I had to get the business right. Yeah. First. So Nas was my next project after I did, you know, them four records for Big L uh-huh. before he passed away. So right after that, I had to learn the business. And then, so when I got in that situation, I already knew the ropes. Like, oh, nah, y'all ain't going to get me. Uh-huh. You know, this is the, 
what, situation. What did hip hop say when Ether came out? Y'all, I never spoke to nobody from over that side yeah. after. After that? Yeah, I think they. They didn't want to rock with you. Nah. Damn. Really? It was never said, but you just got that. It feeling. was just under. It was like, you know, the underwear, like. Yeah. We were talking about blacklisted. Right, earlier, right. <laughs> earlier, right. <laughs> so, That's that guy. Well, well since then, though, no. what about since then? Um, I don't really see too many people off from that side. Yeah. Not that, I'm saying, like, you know, from okay. the Rockefeller camp like that. Oh, man, what an amazing part of history you are. Uh, man, congratulations, Thanks. man. I, I know that's a milestone in, in your in, in your career. Big L uh, uh, was somebody that um, uh, on the West Coast when we started when we were doing the Wake Up Show, we we to us he personified what a true MC yeah. is, you know. And we've had Showbiz come up here mm-hmm. from DITC, Diamond D, uh, Diamond, yeah. uh, um, OC's been up mm-hmm. here. Um, a lot of folks from that that crew have come up here, and we always ask them to tell us stories about Big L because I don't think the audience, uh, well, um, you know, I don't want him to get lost in, yeah, in time, definitely. you know, and people don't understand his significance and who he was as an MC, as a lyricist, and his style mm-hmm. gave birth to, in my opinion, influenced a lot of the greatest MCs that you're hearing today. How did you know Big L? What and how and what songs did y'all work on? Um. Man, I knew Big L because Big L was from, like, not too many dudes from Harlem was getting record deals. Yeah. So he was one of them dudes, like, you'll see promo. He was with Columbia, so mm-hmm. you'll see promo. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this is. Posters. Uh, yeah, and posters. All. Yeah. Like, oh, this yeah. is a dude from my town who, you know, who got on. Mm-hmm. So um, I remember before work when I was at a show, I seen him kill a show, like, acapella, mm-hmm. like, freestyle. I was like. And I was, like, in a group at the time, so mm-hmm. we had to go on after him. I was like, yo, how are we going to go on after that? Like. That was that was amazing. And then one day after school, I'm just chilling outside, and he walks through the block, mm-hmm. and I kind of like, yo, you got I got some beats. You want him? He was like, all right. And we went up to you know my crib in Harlem, mm-hmm. played him the beat, and it was Ebonics beat. He was like, yo, was put that Ebonics on tape. Beat? Yeah, he's like, yo, put that on tape for me. Uh-huh. And then he he's like, he called me one day. He's like, yo, uh, you think I can see how it sound? Like you know, it wasn't. No pro, I ain't had no pro tools and none of that. Yeah. It was like the one tape, uh-huh. the tape, and he was like, oh, "Let me, I want to hear how it sound." Uh huh. So he does it, Yo, pay attention. and it was Ebonics. Cars is whips and sneakers is kicks, money is chips, movies is flicks, also cribs is homes, jacks is pay phones, cocaine is nose candy, cigarettes is bones, oh, uh, a radio is a box, a razor blade is a ox, fat diamonds is rocks and jakes is cops. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, rest in peace, L. Man. Rest in peace, Big L. Um, yeah. And then y'all went on to do more songs. Yeah, um... Yeah, we went. He took me to a D and D studio, and we uh-huh. officially recorded it. Uh-huh. It's some like rare footage online too of me and him in the studio. We was doing a song, "Size Them Up." Uh huh. Size Them Up. Yeah, yeah. We did "Size Them Up." Uh-huh. The heist. Uh huh. And casualties of a dice game. Like uh-huh. when he met me, it was like, "Yo, this dude got all these beats." Like, "Yo, I, you, you gonna run around with me right uh-huh. quick?" Uh-huh. 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 Hey yo, I should have been out. I'm deadly when I pull the pin out. Ooh. Keep fronting, I'm gonna try to chin out. I knocked a lot of men out. I left them on the floor. I noticed this, like, this is like the sound of Harlem, like 97, probably, like Cameron yeah. and all that. Like, what, what kind of sounds were you using? Because you're using a lot of similar sounds in the Big L stuff. I know. Uh, those are just like record samples chopped up. Is it with, horns or what? Yeah, yeah, like horn samples. Mm. You know, dope drum patterns and I love that era. It's a nice yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah. often overlooked. Yeah, well, yeah. What what about um thank you for sharing this too. But but what, how did Big L like what was his process in the studio? Did he write in the studio? Would he was he was a one take guy or I just think he was one of the like those lyricists who had a lot of ideas. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, if I get a beat to this idea that matches, I'ma lay it down. Uh-huh. So I think a lot of it was like premeditated bars, or like he might have had them jot jotted down or uh-huh. in his brain. Because when he, you know, who thinks of a con- who thinks of Ebonics like yeah. on a regular bass? So that had to be something he had premeditated. Like, uh-huh. yo, I'm gonna do this song like this. I just gotta hear the right beat. Uh-huh. You know I mean? Do you think? Because it's interesting how you breaking this down. Do you think 
not going into the studio with Nas and walking in and hearing one of your records already completely done and not being able to touch it, so to speak. And then um, early, like in the beginning of your career, going in the studio with Big L, a legendary studio with Nas, mm -hmm. Jay, Biggie, everybody has worked in. Um, the camaraderie of that place, obviously with the name of DJ Premier and what took place, do you think it'll ever be a studio like that again in terms of what D&D &D was? Nah, no, no, I mean not in New York. I heard it. I heard it's like that in the A. In Atlanta, like they got a studio okay. with artists. Oh, yeah, you go, York, no think about you go by drama. Think about you go by drama studio. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. chill. Shout out to drama. Yeah. Nobody really quad is something like Don that Cannon. sometimes. Don yeah. yeah, quad quad studio is like that a little bit. Like okay. you might go in there and see artists come in and out and mm -hmm. bump into somebody. Like yo, you know what I mean, like that. So Quad still got that vibe. Okay, quad studio, but I've, so. a lot of people like they record in the crib Crit. or in studios and they. They man spot, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. What about Dipset, man? How did you start working? Uh, what was your relationship with them earlier? Um, my relationship was really with Jim. Okay. And uh, I met Jim. I mean, after when I recorded Pop Champagne, uh -huh. I seen, I know it was getting some spins, and I seen Jim in the street, and Jim was like, yo, that joint, I heard this joint's kind of hot. Yeah. I was just like, yo, let's get on it. Like, Yeah. I remember going to the studio with him and him sleep. Okay. He then, slept. No, he slept. He that's how he write. He slept, woke up. Is like, yo, I'm ready to go in the booth. What? What? Wait, yeah, say that like, again. It's it, you can hear it. I mean, a lot of people tell our story. Like, like yeah. that's how he write. Mm -hmm. He goes like, to sleep. Yeah, he goes to sleep. Power nap. And wakes up with bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I seen it with my what own the, eyes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he, oh, I got it. I got, I got it. And then he, he starts sleep <laughs> on the couch. I'm just sitting there like, like behind the you know the board. He wakes up, like, yo, all right, yo, um, I'm going in the booth. I was like, okay. uh -huh. right. What and kind of craziness would you see in a studio with, with Jim in there? Did it get crazy in the studio? Nah, there was no, no crazy like vibes. Like, I know he just had his peoples around him. I uh -huh. guess he wanted to have that that vibe, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Like, yo, we, you know, the block is with me, you know what I mean? Joel's is one of the most gifted artists yeah, that, that to me, and I don't want him to go, you know, one of those guys, you know, unrecognized, you know, but... What was, what was it like working with him? Um, I actually wasn't in the studio so yeah. okay. when Jewels did his verse. Like, I was there for Jim. I was there for Jewels' verse. Okay. I think he kind of did it in his own studio or whatever. What's that, your phone? Somebody, Somebody call you? Got the no, ring no. Doorbell. Oh, I thought that that's was the ring. Wonder. That's the ring. That's the ring. That's okay. the, so he got the ring doorbell, and that's oh, yeah. somebody walking <laughs> past his house okay. with the Absolutely. <laughs> that's good. Protect right. my computer in the Wait, house. Wait, Nas's doorbell? That joint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Tracy, you want to ask? Yeah, yeah. you know, as, <laughs> as you're, like, walking us up through all of the years, I remember when there was a little bit of a beef between you and T-Pain, and you guys yeah. were, like, the auto-tune gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about how you were able to work past that, because eventually y'all did a uh, song together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You know how it is. He was, you know, kind of, you know, segwayed it, you know what I mean, uh, you know that, and... People get it twisted. I heard when I heard Fifty Cent use the auto tune on "I'm a Rider," mm -hmm. I was like, "That's kind of, he kind of made a street." Mm -hmm. So being I'm from Harlem, I'm like, I want to do something party. So that's how Pop Champagne came about. So I'm like, I call somebody, yo, give me that effect. I'm do my own version of that. Mm -hmm. And then you know I kind of swagged it out and made it a party ring, and people started to like it. And then you know what happened? You know it took off. So it took off, and then Pain probably was like, "This some BS." Like, yeah. It's my lane. Mm. But I did it in my own un unique way, and I he used to do interviews like, yo, you know, people bite in my style and all that. So, mm. but then we had like, I remember speaking to Akon. Yeah, Akon was like, we not about that, you know, the beef and and all that. It ain't about nothing. So, you know, I never took it that far that far, far as like dissing them. Mm -hmm. and, I know I had people in my ear like, yo, diss them, big. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. sometimes you gotta be. You know what I mean? Like, be it, above it, that it, shit. Yeah, be yeah. above that. Yeah, that's like, creative, man. Yeah, yeah. Neither one of y'all owned the effect anyway. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, I mean, that shit been done way Roger, before T-Pain. Right. You know, Ro it. Roger Troutman is the <laughs> first time I heard, heard <laughs> it. Uh -huh. Something of it being done. Yeah. Now, what about um, Death of Autotune? Like, did you take yeah. that as a personal kind of hit? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, I got 40 calls that night. <laughs> mm. I believe it. Like, phone ringing. Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Turn on 97. Jay is this new <laughs> for making that eat the boy. I'm like, gonna get to that eat the boy. You, you like, catch it too. 
<laughs> so when you when the information is gave to you like that, yeah. that's it, you you know, forty that phone calls like yeah. this you right now. Turn on the radio. So I'm <laughs> listening to it like, wow, this is crazy. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And then I had to do. He he dropped it that Monday. Uh-huh. Summer Jam was that Sunday, oh. and we had to do. That was my first experience. They owe me another Summer Jam experience. Uh-huh. That's another story. Uh-huh. But he performed it that same that Summer Jam. I remember. Wow! But he performed it after you though. No, he performed it before, before me. Oh! <laughs> yeah, like he came out. Man. I remember him on a. You know. You know that. That little truck they ride around in the yeah the little uh, carts yeah, yeah carts yeah, the, yeah like yeah I'm about to mess up your whole night <laughs> so you think it was um, calculated I don't know I just felt like that, it it felt like it was it felt I like didn't it was understand cal- it I didn't bro- understand because I was from New York yeah uh-huh. I'm winning I'm from New York uh-huh. if somebody from New York is helping the town get the W don't shoot it down uh-huh. you know what I'm saying. Lift it up. Lift it, it up. Like, like embrace yeah. it. Get on the verse. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So that's a, that's only, I felt some way about that. But yeah. now today, is it 90% of the songs have auto-tune on Everybody has auto-tune. Beyonce's on auto-tune. Yeah. It gave birth to auto-tune. That's <laughs> yeah, like that same man. song gave birth to auto-tune. Yeah. Uh, um, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he definitely performed that, and we had to go right on after him. You had to like, go right after him? Yeah. Wait, oh. Immediately follow it? Yeah, like the next act. Like, you were part of an elaborate scheme, <laughs> my brother. What was the What was the crowd's reaction to it, you? It was weird because it was. I reckon it was a. It was a hit. Pop champagne was a hit record. Hell yeah. yeah, but Jay just came, made the energy weird, and um, <laughs> it was like I remember just being on stage, like okay. Yeah. So you feel they owe you a summer jam? Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. Ron Browns, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I All like right. you, Rob Brown. Man, man, uh, <laughs> tell me about this artist. Um, is it Ma- Manny Miles? Oh, Monty Miles. Monty Shout Miles. Shout out to Monty Miles. Tell me, she got the "Ain't No Nick." Uh, yeah. Ain't no Nick. I don't. Ain't yeah. no Nick. Uh, yeah, kind um, of a remix, if you will. Is it a yeah. remix of "Ain't No yeah, Nick"? It's a remix. Okay, yeah, and I that's kinda, your artist. Yeah, uh, kind of sort of. Somebody you're working with. Yeah, yeah, close. I've been okay. developing her. Okay, so who who is she? She's Dougie Fresh niece. Mm. That's Dougie Fresh niece. Yeah. That's actually Dougie Fresh Harlem. Harlem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She cold. I like her. Yeah, yeah, she got yeah. a vibe about mind. her. Yeah. Uh, what's a little bit about her you could tell us? So that um, other... she's, she's from Harlem, man. She's one of them girls that seen it. Yeah. Seen everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Been she, around. So, you know, yeah, I've, been de- she, I've been developing her for like a couple years. She has some really provocative lyrics on that song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She got to be competitive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's leaking on on um, leaking on seats. Yeah, she, yeah. she got to be competitive. That's what she says. You know, I, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, I don't want to say what she actually yeah, yeah, says. Yeah. You know, but she says a whole lot. You got a song <laughs> called uh, a remix of "Hate Me Now." Yeah, you know, I mean, you know how that that culture is with the dance culture, mm-hmm. and so I do my versions that's that get the kids going. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They don't even know it's probably a "Hate Me Now" sample. Yeah. They probably like this song's great, <laughs> right? Because I'd be like, "Yo, you heard that?" They'd be like, "No, you uh-huh. know this sample?" Nah, I'd be like, "This they is a new they, song to them." They don't even know. They huh? don't even know. We just played "Hate Me Now" like yeah. about an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. They don't. They. So I kind of catered my my music towards them because uh-huh. they they kind of receptive. They don't judge nothing. If it's hot, it's not like yo Drake's on there. It's like yo, that's hot. That's I'm right. dancing to it and partying to it and. That's a good feeling, you know what I mean? I kind of lost that, the love for it when everything got kind of like, so who's on it? Who produced it? You got somebody for the remix? Like, yeah. that's too political. Like, Yeah. As soon as they it. hear the song, they're asking these questions. Yeah, huh? like yeah. the adults. Mm-hmm. The young the young generation is like, it's, they have a, like it or they don't. Mm-hmm. There's no specifics. Like, where did you record that ad in? <laughs> yeah. Like, no. real, real quick, um, Pretty V. Vina, shout out to Vina. Vina, one of the 
Yeah, yeah. She's I, one of the most. I, when, if I'm having a bad day, I'll go to her Instagram. Yeah. You know, um, and just it always lifts me up. She's a really creative person. She's a, a, a comedian, yeah. uh, a model. Yeah, everything. Uh, she does it all. You know, she, she wake up like that, too. She wake up like that. That's her. She freestyles and says <laughs> nothing. Not, yeah. She just freestyles. <laughs> she just gives you freestyle melodies sometimes <laughs> and, and sounds and then come back with words. Yeah. Um, you guys put out two records. Two songs. Two songs yeah. already. And then. Um, and is she gonna pursue? I know she's on wilding out, yeah, but is yeah. she gonna pursue uh, move, yeah, she, music? Yeah, every time she comes to New York, we get in the studio. When she comes back, I want to meet her. Yes, she, I, we spoke to her. And okay. It's going down. It's going down. All right, man, yeah. we're gonna play this Hate Me Now uh, remix, Ron Browns. If you want to get it, they can pick it up everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick it up everywhere. Okay, and you can follow him on Twitter at Ron Browns and follow official Shake Nation too. Okay. <laughs> Sway in the morning, Friday, Friday, Cypher. Shade 4-5, Rump Browse, we got some hyenas coming up, Black. Black.